Welcome back to the Automation Minute. My name is Sean Tierney from Insights and Automation, and today we're going to talk about how to get a program out of one of these old Slick 100s or 150s so that maybe you can migrate it to something else, or maybe you just want to edit it and throw it back in. So I did a very long edition of this for members. If you're a member, you can check that edition out. I go through all the gory details. But in this video, I just wanted to make a public one to help anybody out there who's, who's uh, running into issues. Now, the first thing you want to know is what cable to use, right? And what I have here is the 1745 PCC. Now this is the original cable. Again, Rock will stop making all this stuff around 2014, about 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And it came out in the 80s, right? So it was out for a very long time. But in any case, um, these are plentiful on the used market or recycled market. Um, they, I have read some places where these are just RS-232, the RS-45 cables. I can't confirm that. But in any case, um, I do know there's some third-party people out there who make new versions of the 1745 PCC. So if you're interested in that, just put a search into your web browser. You'll find them pretty quick. Um, we've tried to uh, partner with those people, but we just get crickets. So um, just do a search. You'll find them. In any case, so this PCC comes with the C1 cable that goes into your Slick 100 or 150. Now that said, on the other side of this, you'll find a 25-pin D shell. And I'm just using a standard 25 to 9 converter to go directly into my USBS. And you should be able to use any USB to serial cable that works with Allen Bradley. Okay, so I'm just uh, plug that in here. Now, I want to just say this. I want to be very strong about this. You definitely want to make sure your serial port works prior to trying this out. Because um, if your serial port's not working, you're just going to be frustrated, right? So in any case, what I did in the earlier uh, members edition of the show is I tested it out with the Micrologix 1100 to make sure everything was working. Now, the other thing, if you're using VMware like I'm using, one of the things you may have to do is you may have to disconnect your USPS or your USB to serial converter from VM VMware to free up that port and then reconnect it, okay? So you can do that in software with removable devices. But I did see that for some reason, VMware is really hanging on to that port, doesn't wanna let go of it. So once you got your PCC cable, you're plugged into your unit. This was actually sent in by a viewer, so we'll see their program when we go online with it. You get your cable set up, you go into, you go into device manager, make sure you know what the COM port is. Then we run a program called DOSBox, completely free. Let's go over there to the computer. And I already have DOSBox installed. It's completely free here. Let me pull up the website. It's just DOSBox.com. Um, and you can pull it up, you can look at it there. And uh, I've installed it already. But one of the things you got to do to get it set up is you got to go into the configuration file. You'll find a link right here. It's called Options. And what we did is we wanted to mount the folder that has our DOS software in it. And uh, you'll see right down here at the end. Let me zoom in. You'll see I put Mount C, C colon backslash DOS probes. And that's where I put the Slick 100 150 software. Now, if you're a member, and you need a copy of that free software that Rockwell used to give away. I don't know why they still don't give it away, but um, just let me know. If you're general public, you'll probably find it somewhere on the internet. But in any case, you can see here's my C pro, uh, colon backslash DOS probes. And in there, I have my PCIS with my uh, free copy of the uh, programming software for the Slick 100 150. Okay. Again, I really wish Rockwell would just leave this as a free download. I don't know why they took it out. Um, it's so tiny. Like some of the images on their websites are bigger than this, this software, right? It's great for doing migrations anyways. So um, we put that in there first because I got to get, when I'm in DOSBox, I got to get to that, that software so I can run it. And the other thing I have to do is I have to put in my serial ports and I'm going to go really big on this. So I had some problems with this because I think their description up here is a little wacky. So this is what I ended up doing. Now, whatever your real COM port is, in this case, in my VMware, it's COM port 1, you need to map it to 1 or 2 because this old legacy DOS software only supports COM port 1 or 2. So if it, your, your USBS or USB to serial is COM 8, still map it to <laughs> serial 1, okay? And so this is the syntax I use to do that. Serial 1 equals direct serial space real port colon COM 1, okay? So I've saved that already. And then when I run DOSBox, this is the other tip I want to share with you, is look for any errors here. See, port is already in use, right? If you get that error, and this is because I'm using VMware, I'm just going to go up here 
and disconnect it and I'll reconnect it and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and you can see no problem opening that comp, but it didn't like the default settings. I don't even know where these come from, but I don't care. It doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do in here in DOSBox, this is very easy. Remember, I mapped the software folder on my hard drive to C drive, right? So I'm going to go C colon enter, a little DOS lingo for you. And then I'll do a directory. You can see my PCIS folder. Let me change directory to PCIS. And I'll do a directory there. And you can see the PCIS EXE. So I'll type in PCIS and press enter. Here's the software. I'll press the space bar and I'll press F4 to make sure I'm connected. And yes, I'm connected to my unit. Now that's using the default settings. Maybe yours isn't the default settings. You can change those under F7. And this is where you'll find under F1, you'll find the default baud rate. And under F2, you'll find the comp ports. Look, only one and two. Okay, so let's back out of there. And if I now want to upload it, I can just do F1. And I can do F1 read from SLC. And it's read it in. And now I can just hit escape. I can go to F2 program. And voila, there's my program. This had about 68 rungs in it. But in any case, that is everything you need to know to, you know, to get online with these old Slick 100s and 150s and uh, suck the program out. And again, if you need uh, the manuals, just go to av.com, search on 1745. You want the 1745 800-800A. It'll come up in the list. And uh, that book is like everything you need to know to get started with this thing. That's what I used back in 1990 to program my first PLC. So uh, in any case, as far as uh, finding the software, again, search online. It was available for free for, for a while from Rockwell. Don't know why it's still not free, but everybody has it up there. If you're a member, just contact me directly. I'm also going to put an extended edition of this episode up at theautomationschool.com. I'll call it the Slick 100 150 Quick Start. It'll be like 10 bucks, one-time purchase, own it forever. And um, I'll also answer questions up there, although um, I'm not going to be actually answering questions on like, you know, the, how to troubleshoot the hardware. You can call the, the, the people who made the hardware for that. But if you have questions with the procedure, getting connected and uploading, I'm happy to help with that. And, you know, I'll include a zip file of all the manuals I've downloaded for free and all the software I've downloaded for free. So, you know, it'll be one-stop shopping if you're not a member and you need more help than just what I've covered in this video. So look for that in the coming days at theautomationschool.com. And with that, and that is the end of this episode. If you enjoy this episode, please give it a like, a sub, and a share. That's the only way for me to grow my audience and find new vendors to come on the show and find new topics to talk about. And don't forget, every Friday I do a, a Q&A and a question of the week. So if you have any questions, we just got one coming from the, on the panel view plus over at theautomationblog.com. Please send your questions. You can use the link, the question link at theautomationblog.com or theautomationschool.com to submit your question. And... Uh, or comment on this video at the Automation Blog, and I will uh, probably use it at the end of the week on Friday in the Q&A and the question of the week. So with that, I want to wish you all good health and happiness, and until next time, my friends, peace.